Hi there, everybody. Today I have Susan Jensen here. And Susan is a renowned expert in the field of on-camera presence and self-confidence. As the founder of Camera Ability, Susan has created a unique blend of mindset coaching, technical expertise, and practical strategies to empower clients to overcome self-limiting beliefs, master their on-camera skills, and connect with their audience in a compelling and engaging way. Through her experience as a professional singer, teacher, and podcast host, and her transformative courses and coaching, Susan has become a trusted authority, inspiring others to step into the spotlight with confidence and authenticity. So, welcome, Susan. Thank you. For being here. <laughs> Thank you. Now I got to step up, right? <laughs> this is great. Thank you for that intro. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Nice, nice to be here. So today we're going to be discussing. Um, common challenges individuals face when presenting on camera and how to overcome them. And then as well as uh, providing practical techniques for managing nervousness and stage fright during on-camera appearances. So these are some different topics that we I haven't discussed before or ever really, I guess, touched with anybody. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about them. Cool. No, I'm happy to be here to share. There's, you know, there's a lot, you know, there's more, and we only have the 20 minutes. So I appreciate that. We will, you know, we can just kind of touch on a few things, but um, I just, I just feel like I, I'm in a place because I, of my, my past has been as a professional singer for like 20 years. And then I got my BN and then I got educated <laughs> and then I got my BN and then was a special ed teacher with special, severe special needs kids. And then, um, and, and I'm a realtor actually currently, and I'm still doing that because I still love that to do that, but I'm also a podcast host, which I love, love doing. And I love meeting people like you. Um, but I'm finding that uh, the, for me, all of those things that I've done all my life, has led me to really be comfortable in front of the camera and to help train people or not train. That's the wrong word. I'm sorry to encourage them and to help them give confidence so that they, they feel really good in front of it and nothing really phases them. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I really like that. And you know what? And it's inspiring as well. It, it helps people stay on the track they need having that inspiration and that extra little that mm -hmm. um, encouragement, just, just, just having that there can uh, make people like leaps and bounds. I think it's when you when you get stuck for something to say, or a lot of times when I was in a public eye, like for quite a while, I was like, well, they called it a celebrity, a local celebrity. And I would actually walk by places and people would stick mics in my mouth and go, Sue, tell us about this, you know, and I would be like, no chance to think. And I, I got to the point where I just had that confidence in myself so that when that happened, I would just start talking. Sometimes I'd go home and have to listen to it on the TV because I wouldn't know what I even said. You know, it was like after, you know, like a you own is like it just you gain that and the confidence, as we know, is not a place that you are going to be. I mean, when you're confident, it's not like this is what I am doing now. And this is how I'm portraying myself. Confidence is being willing to try. And, and as you're playing, when you're learning to play baseball or, or violin, I mean, you can't just pick it up and just do it. You have to try, right? So the confidence for me is that willingness to just try, 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 try until you get to the point where it's just kind of automatic. Yeah. And if it's not automatic, if things go wrong, you can quickly say, oh, that didn't work, but I'm going to try this. And you don't get upset about it or it doesn't impede or in, in influence what you're trying to say what your message is you're still you're still carrying on regardless even if things do not go right all the time for sure yeah how do you think how do you think you can go about that and like I guess taking taking the challenges and being able to frame them in a way that they look like they're I guess, positive situations that have happened in your life? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think the first thing that comes to my mind is just knowing, I, I, if I can use the, the um, example of singing, for instance. Mm -hmm. So when I, the very, very first time I was on a television show, it was like, it was a half hour show when I was a guest and I got up twice to sing during during the, the TV, but I was on set. I always like to be early. And I remember being on set and kind of sitting at this 
this table and the cameraman, we were all just waiting around. You know how you kind of wait around for things to happen. Cameraman came over and sat down at the table with me and brought me a cup of coffee and said, oh, here, you want this? And I went, yeah, sure, thanks. And we just started talking and having a really nice, he was just a really nice guy. And I was so nervous. Like I'm, I was really super nervous because that was like my first time. And I remember just talking to him and he was telling about his wife and his dog and all this stuff. And it, that was like the perfect gift for me because as soon as the show started and then the lights came up and then the director's going three, two, one, he counts you in and the light comes up on the camera. That second that that red light came on, he was standing, he was the cameraman, right? And I just started talking to him like I'd just been talking to him. I was like seeing him, not my, I wasn't thinking about how nervous I was. I was just kind of singing my song to him. And it was, that's how I got over that. And I'm realizing that it's got nothing to do with me as in front of the camera, you're not there. If I'm thinking about me, I'm going to be nervous. I'm going to stutter. I'm going to go, ah, 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 and I'm going to forget things. But if I'm thinking my message is to you and to the audience, and this is what I'm trying to share with them, and I'm thinking about them as receivers, totally takes everything off of you so that you're really in that confident, comfortable position because you've got something to say or to sing or to do whatever you're doing. So that's that's my mindset. That's where I would always be thinking, I want to share something with you, you know, and this is what it is. And then it just took everything off of me. I honestly, otherwise you're just like, oh, how does my hair look? And oh my God, you know what I mean? Otherwise you're, you're self-conscious and you, you kind of do and say silly things. That's when that happens is when you're thinking about yourself instead of thinking about the audience. Mm. Yeah, I would have thought that's a really great way to put it. Mm -hmm. So addressing common challenges individuals face when presenting on camera. And so how yeah what what are other ways that you found that worked for you to overcome those those challenges that came up mm. again it was always just focusing on not me <laughs> you know that was the biggest thing it's a self-awareness where yeah I know I'm I'm nervous but I'm going to use that as a as um just as fuel or energy that like I make it more of a positive energy to gets me going and doing what I need to do. Like physically, when I would stand and sing, my, my feet would be braced. I would be solid, solid ground and singing. And so I could breathe properly and, and I'm looking at the camera and doing those things. That's what I did when I sang. And now when I do my podcast, I, it's, it's, it's interesting because I'm mostly focused on what my guest is saying. And mm -hmm. that's all I'm focused on. I'm not thinking anything about myself. And I want to know what, what more do you have to say? And and then when I when they say something that interests me, then I just kind of jump right in. And so I'm always thinking about that other person. I think that's the biggest thing is just having that mindset. I'm here to serve other people and mm -hmm. to get the message across. And how can I help them hear that? And how can I share that? So again, it's just always thinking about, you know, my being of service and being of help to other people. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If that kind of makes sense. I'm hoping that that's coming across. Okay. That does. Yeah, definitely. And so what do you think performers specifically come up against for mental health challenges? Mm. A lot of, I, I can speak for myself as a performer for 20 years, I went through so much childhood trauma <laughs> and we were talking about mental awareness, mental health awareness, so important. And when I was younger, there was no labels for anything. There was no label for ADHD, which I'm sure I have. Um, and I'm, I was kind of in foster care. I was abandoned. Um, I had a, a really bad, I was put in two foster homes. So I was in one foster home where I was sexually abused and I was just before grade one. So I have all of that trauma behind me. I think um, two things happened. I My mom was there when she could be there. My mom did exactly what she could do at the time. And so there's no blame or shame there because I knew that she was doing the very best she could for me. And um, she instilled me one thing. And that was just that God loves me. Nobody else is there for you, but God loves you. It was just kind of a thing that I, as a little girl, I just took with me thinking, okay, I don't know who my dad is. I don't know what's going on out there. I don't know where I'm going to be next week. But that was my, it was my inner sanctuary and inner place of stability is all I had. I had really no security at all, except for that. And so that was the one thing that I always took with me, knowing that whatever happened, you know, um, and then that I could 
deal with it, that I had the strength to deal with it. And then the second thing as performers is we, I know that I, I just wanted attention. <laughs> I mean, I just wanted anybody to pay attention to me. Like I felt like if I said something, nobody was listening. And even if I said something, they would just tell me to be quiet. I was never felt like I had a voice, like I could share or share my feelings or say anything to anybody. I was always in a position where the people around me were not caring, loving people that cared about me. So I always felt muffled or something. It was always like, shut up. And that took its toll on me. And I just feel like for me, the singing was like, now I can actually stand here. The spotlight comes on and people are actually paying attention. Mm -hmm. So isn't that interesting that that was my way subconsciously to get the attention that I never had, you know, that I really, that I really needed as a kid. So then, and, and then, but then again, now, as I mature, and as you get out of that, you know, once you, your brain changes, and you develop, and you grow, you realize, okay, and now I'm really, now when I'm asking myself, why are you singing? And why are you here? And why are you doing podcasts? And why are you teaching? <clears throat> it's because I really want to help people. And I want to be of service to them. I want them to know that, you can go through all that really bad stuff, but that you can come out the other side and that there's really great things out there for you and that you can do it. You know, you have the power to do it in your own self. You don't have to rely on anybody else. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that it, interesting how, how it shifts, how my conscious understanding of just wanting to be on stage just to get attention. And it, you know, I was so bad. <laughs> To, to where now I know that I'm there to provide a service and to maybe give hope or to give, you know, just to show love or to do something for the audience or for whoever is listening. Yeah. It also seems that you're quite the role model. So that in itself is, is inspiring too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think we choose, we have a choice to, you know, take all those negative things that happen um and we can just wallow in that if you like and live in that past we could or we can let that let all those traumatic things they happen they happen you know no doubt about that but you can let those feelings you can move forward and let the feelings go and the emotions go from it you can detach from that event right a lot of people carry that event with them like for the rest of their lives and they it stops them from doing the things they want to do they might have dreams and aspirations, but then they, oh, I can't do that because of this. This happened to me or where I think I'm really fortunate in that I realized, you know what? There's nobody going to do this but me. And mm -hmm. yeah, those things happened and they were not happy places for me for a long, long time, but I can I can make it better. And so that was my, I was just determined to do that. So I think that's kind of explains, I just my attitude towards it and, and that there is a mindset that we, that we, a healthy mindset that we need to have just to be able to move forward in a really positive light instead of remembering the past, but using the past, Hey, we all learn from our mistakes and we all learn from the things that happened to us. Mm -hmm. That's the trick. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, it seems that once you, or at least what I've heard, is that once you jump that hurdle of, of acknowledging that nobody else is going to do things for you and you just have to do them for yourself, it becomes a lot easier because you now you have this mindset where, okay, so everything that has happened, I'm not going to let it define me. I'm just going to use it as something that's going to push me forward. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And where, and um, where you, you push the, there's a, a, a phrase about being, you know, moving forward. Oh, I'm not, never go, go away from this. I don't forget. I'll, it'll come to me in a second, you know, about just moving forward on something, but it, you're out, you're not going towards, but you're more. And anyway, I I'm sorry. Now I've totally went out right out of my brain. I just totally lost the thought. So I'll come back to it. Ask me another question. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what, what are your favorite practical techniques that have helped you manage your nervousness in, mm. in life in general? Um, and not necessarily just on camera, but things that have helped, you know, get, mm. get through what you, what you dealt with as a child as well. Mm -hmm. specifically. Oh yeah. All the childhood stuff. It's that's, that's parked. I mean that I don't, that 
maybe sometimes if somebody maybe ignores me when I say something to them, those little pains come back of being ignored or neglected. Mm-hmm. And, but then I just, I just use my mind to, you know, cause the feelings take over there a little bit and you feel a little out. And, but it's my mind says, Hey, uh, Mel Robbins does this really cool five second rule. And she says, you just count and anything that negative comes in for whatever it could be. I could give you a million examples of that, but where you count down five, four, three, two, one. And you just, it just, it, takes it from the emotion to your brain and it just kind of calms whatever that was down. And then you, then you get to a point where you realize, Oh, he, he probably didn't even hear what I said. He probably just missed that. I was saying something, or you just chalk it up to it's not nothing personal and it's nothing to hurt me. So, and um, so those are the things that I always keep in mind. Again, it's being really mindful and really self-aware of when those things happen and when the negative things happen or when I get bad memories about anything. I think it through saying like, I'm safe today and I'm, I'm in a loving place right now and I'm going to be in the moment here and I'm going to be- treasure this moment. Just spending time with you today here is just, is just treasure. I think that's really important and it's I'm really happy to be here and it makes, you know, I just I appreciate that. I appreciate and I'm grateful for that time, for this time. How did you start becoming more present with your life? I think when I when I realized I, a few years ago when we were all in lockdown, I took a course. It was called uh, Happy for No Reason. It was based on the book, The Secret. And there's Marcy Shymoff. And I, I finally understood it was something, it was interesting how you know things, but you don't know things. You know, it's like, I thought I was just kind of right on track with a lot of things that were going on with me. But I really realized at that point in time, because I took a, it was called Happy for No Reason. And it talks about how you can be happy from the inside out. It's got nothing to do with external circumstances. Shit happens all the time and things are happening all the time, <clears throat> but it's how I respond to them that makes it. So I can get super upset or I could get angry and yeah, lash out at somebody else. I can blame, shame or complain about it like all day. But I learned from that course and that's actually some of the material that I use in my coaching. And it's just to say, you are 100% responsible. I'm 100% responsible for my own self. And so if I'm going to take that negatively and start blaming, shaming, complaining or being hurt by things, that's on me. It's not even the person who did it they you can't make people make you angry (laughs) like nobody can make you angry it's you're making yourself angry so it's just being really self-aware and really um uh just specific about the feelings i want to attach myself to so that's the biggest thing that i learned in this course just that hey i'm responsible and if anything's uh, upsetting me or hurting me that's on me nobody else and i can't blame anybody else for it so it, it helps me get this. So then what happens is every day I just do this. There's a 17 second rule where you just take 17 seconds, and just stare at a, at a bird in a tree or stare at the sun or stare. I don't know, at your plumbing. I don't know. Stare at something and just to take your mind to be more mindful of that moment in time. And the more often you can do that throughout your day, you just actually feel really, I just feel really good inside. I mean, and even if you come up, you know, Sarah, you come up and give me a rough time about something. It's okay. Like, I, it's like, okay, whatever. Like I, it, that's not going to steal my, my um, presence or my, my happiness. Maybe my, exactly. My inner sense of peace and well-being. It's not going to, you're not going to rob me of that. Cause it's, it's there. So those are the things that I just always know now. And I always, I'm just, it's again, it's just such a self-awareness that I never knew I never knew I had that power. I never knew that I, my mind was that great, that I could change anything up that I wanted to change. Yeah. And I'm not talking about, you know, death in the family or things like those things are just traumatic. A lot of things are still going to happen to us, Mm -hmm. but it's how, you know, how we, we respond to it. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate being able to pick your brain today about the challenges individuals have been facing on on camera, but also just usual life and and touching on how how we can be more present and choosing to not let things affect us in ways that 
you know, create more mental health problems than what we than what, what we necessarily uh think mm-hmm. that come about. Cause because I guess taking taking negative inner energy in and not being present creates more anxiety, depression, and concern yes. for our own own well-being rather than being able to, you know, like you said, look out into a tree and look at a bird and just take that moment and be like wow like I'm thankful right now like I have my limbs Mm -hmm. I have clean drinking water and things that just you know sometimes we take advantage of that's really true and and there are times and there are are people who need extra help you know and I've I I live in a family of psychologists and I and I've been around surrounded by people my whole life that are helpers of that and so there's some things like I was never in the position where I had to go to counseling but if I did I would you know what I mean like I mean there are people and places and things that can help you with when it's where it is out of your control because a lot of us have different you know we're made up differently and um and sometimes we need extra help you know like sometimes there's meds sometimes there's counseling and and um all those things are out there to but it's it's making that one step and that one phone call yes yeah Yeah, help you know and getting help for it just saying the words and you know just being open to that help that receiving it right because everyone's different and everyone needs a little bit more you know, more or less, you know, it's up, to, it's everyone's individual. So definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for being here today, Susan. I really appreciate your time and um, I'm excited to get this out to my compound community. Oh, thank you. You're, you're doing a great job. So I appreciate what you're doing too. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to be here. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yes. Anytime. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Well, Have a wonderful day, guys, and thanks so much for joining Periodic Conversations. Thank you.